Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to replace having multiple yes no fields for a customer, or any other record for that matter, with a properly relational solution that involves a many to many relationship and a junction table. This will allow you to easily create additional options in the future without having to redesign your tables and redesign all your forms. This is an expert level video, which means it's past the basics. We've got a couple prerequisites, things you should know before watching this video. You should understand many to many relationships. This is the more complicated type of relationship. These involve three tables, right? Table one, table two, and a junction table to bind them together. If you don't know how to do a many to many relationship, go watch this video first. You should know how to build subforms and continuous forms. And you should know how to build relational combo boxes. That's where you have a combo box that gets its value from a different table. If you don't know how to do any of these things, go watch those three videos first. They're absolutely free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those. And then come on back. I'll wait for you. Go on. Go. Get. Today's question comes from Bruce in Boston, Massachusetts. But I've been asked this a couple of times by different people over the last week or two. So I figured it's time for a video. Bruce says, I have about 15 different yes, no fields that I use to set options for my customers. For example, do we provide them with hardware, service, software? Are they on the mailing list? Do they have a warranty? Are they an active account? Things like this. I've heard you say several times that having 15 different fields and 15 different checkboxes on my form is not the best way to go about this. And yes, every time I want to add an option, it's a pain. Can you show me the better way? Yes, Bruce, I will show you the light. Follow the light, or as Golem says, don't follow the lights. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, whenever you do something like this, like I show you here, right, you put 15 different yes, no fields in your customer table, and then you got 15 different checkboxes, and then anytime you want to add an option in the future or change something, you got to modify the table, then you got to modify the form or multiple forms if you got them there. What you want is a setup like this with a many-to-many -many relationship and a subform. This way, you have a table with these options in it, and then you can easily add ones in the future without having to go through redesigning your database. And your users can work with these too. Your users can add options if you want to give them that option. The option for options, right? So the wrong way to build this, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but the wrong way to build this would be to go into your design view of your customer table, right? Now in here, I've got is active. I got one. If you got one or two, a couple different options, okay, fine. But if you start getting into, you know, my, my rule of three, right? If you start getting three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 15 options, right? Is customer, yes, no. Is on warranty, yes, no, blah, 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 right? Then it's time to start moving that stuff to a separate table. So you don't wanna have 15 different yes, no fields in here, and you don't wanna have 15 different checkboxes on your customer form, right? All right here, like I did in the, in the, the preview slide. So what is the right way to do it? Well, first we're gonna create a table called our option table to store all of these options in it. Okay, so we're gonna have an option ID, that's our auto number, and then the options name, option name. Remember, don't use just name, it's a reserved word, right? Name, date, things like that are reserved words. Save this as my option T, my option table, primary key, yes, and let's put some options in here. You can put any kind of options you want. All right, we got the old is active, uh, is a customer, because they may no longer be a customer. They might just be a, a prospect. Uh, is prospect. In other words, they might have told you to, you know, go away, don't call me anymore. Uh, is on mailing list, right? These kinds of things. Is a warranty customer. Uh, is a Trekkie. You know, is a brown coat. Whatever you want. And as you can see, it's very easy in the future to add options to this. Okay, now here comes the many to many relationship part. There's our options. Okay, here's our customer list. We got a customer ID, first name, last name, whatever. Now, if this was just a one to many relationship, in other words, a customer could only have one option, then we wouldn't need a junction table. We would just save the option ID in the customer table, right? We'd go into customer T, add an option ID, make it a long, and then you'd pick one. But I want a many-to-many -many relationship. In other words, each of these can have many of these, right? 
I could be an active, I could be a prospect, I could be a warranty customer, I could be a Trekkie and a brown coat. Never never make someone pick between being a Trekkie and a brown coat. Trekkie and a Star Wars fan, yeah, but that's a different story. And vice versa, though, each one of these can be assigned to multiple of these. You can have many customers, many Trekkies, and so on. So we need a third table, a junction table in the middle here to track that relationship back and forth. So our junction table, create another table. And this is going to be, I like to name my junction tables usually, not all the time, usually a combination of these names. So in this case, it's going to be customer X option ID. And this will be the customer X option junction table. Okay, that's the auto number. And then we basically just need each one of those IDs. So we need a customer ID to know which customer it belongs to. Number, right? And then we need the option ID to know which option you're selecting. Now, if that's all you wanted, if you just wanted to put someone in that group, right, in that option, then you're done. But we have a yes or no field we want to also have. All right, so we'll call this the option value and make that a yes or no field because you might want to specifically set someone yes or no. And by removing them from the option, right, now you got a null value so you don't know whether or not they are a Trekkie. Okay, there's a yes of no, and then null means I don't know, which you could also use a triple state combo or a triple state checkbox for that, but that's a whole different video. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. All right, so now save this customer X option T, the customer X option junction table. Okay, now let's put some sample data. I like to put sample data in whenever I'm getting started. Okay. All right, so how does, what's the data in here look like? All right, so customer one, option one is active and yes, okay? Customer one, option two, is this person an actual customer? Sure, why not? All right, see, customer one, option three, prospect, no. I'm done buying from them. I told them, stop trying to sell to me. Okay, customer one, uh, let's skip down to is Trekkie, yes. See what I'm doing here? Brown coat, yes. Now, customer two, Jimmy Kirk, right? And you can pick whatever options you want. Is prospect, yes. Uh, is he a Trekkie? Sure. Why don't you get out of your parents' basements and go. <laughs> remember that SNL skit? Classic. All right, but you see how the junction table works here, right? This ID is basically irrelevant. We'd only need this if for some other way we wanted to reference a specific item in here. So we're not going to need that most of the time, but you got to have the customer, which option you're picking and what the value is. You can do the same thing with other values too. You could do this with numbers. You could do this with text, whatever type of field you want to have in here. Okay. Now we're going to make a continuous form out of this and stick it in the customer form, like right over here. All right. So let's make the continuous form. Let me close all this stuff down. Save changes. Sure. All right. I have a continuous. Whoop. I have a continuous form right there, which is part of my blank template. I'm just going to use this guy. Copy, paste, control C, control V. And I'm going to call this my customer X option F, my junction form, basically a subform. All right, design view. All right, we don't need the ID. We probably never will get rid of that. Don't worry about putting the customer ID on here because the customer ID is going to be set by the subform relationship. Okay. So the first thing we need is the option ID, but I don't want the number here. I want to see the value and I want to be able to pick from a list. Okay. So let's turn this into a combo box. First though, let's set the data source for the form. This guy has to be bound to the record source, which is our junction table, right? This form is bound to customer X option T. It gets its list of values from the junction table, that guy. Okay, we don't need that because that'll be on the parent form. The relationship takes care of that. We don't need that. We're probably never gonna use it, but it's nice. To, it should always have an auto number in a table. Well, not always, 99% of the time. Okay, but we do need to select the option and then we'll need a checkbox to set the value. So let's replace this with a combo box to pick the option. All right, so form design, find a combo box right there. Drop it down here. All right, look up the values from a table or query. 
Where are you getting your list of options from that go in the box? Well, that's the option table. Next, what data do you want? Bring them both over. Remember, the option ID is what actually gets saved in the table. The option name is what we want to see in the box. Next, sort by option name. Next, that's what it's going to look like when you open the box up. Key column is hidden, but we need that ID there to save the value, right? Resize it if you want to. Next. Now, once the user picks a value, they pick an option, what do you want to do with it? Well, I want to store it in the junction table for this record, right? So we're going to store it in the option ID in the junction table. Next. What label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways and then hit finish. All right. There's the label. Goodbye. Slide this over here. This is my option. There's my combo box. All right. Like this. Come here. Resize you. All right. That's probably too big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Okay. Now we just need the yes, no field over here. We can get that from the add existing field since this form is bound to that table. Find the option value. Click, drag, drop. There it is. Get rid of its label. We're going to slide it right there. And then we just copy this guy. You can even do my trick where you just slide that out like that and then put a bunch of spaces in here and then go value. All right. Well, I put 15 labels on there when one will do the trick just fine. All right. Grab the right side, slide it over. Uh, we don't need the form footer, so slide that up. Save it. Close it. And let's take a peek at what we got. Okay, looks good. There's all of the records, right, for both customers, because we put records in here for two customers. All right, now when we make this a subform in our customer form, that relationship will get taken care of by the subform object. So I'm going to go into design view. Just for the purposes of class, I'm going to delete all this stuff over here. We don't need to see it. All right, and then we're going to take that subform that we just built right there, click, drag, drop, there it is. Delete that label. Slide this over here like this. Drop the bottom down so you can see multiple options. Oh, I should. we should take a break at this point because I got a survey a little while ago from a student and we laughed about it afterwards in an email. And uh, he said, your classes are really, really good. I enjoy them, but you should have more breaks in the class so I can like, go to the bathroom or get a drink. And I, I emailed him back and I said, you realize this is pre-recorded video, right? It's not live. You can pause it anytime you want. And he laughed and I laughed and we had fun with that one. Um, but anyways, <laughs> anyways, save it, close it, open it back up again. And oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? All right, go to Jimmy Kirk. He's got his options you put in there. You go to somebody else, Deanna Troy. Okay. All right. Customer. Yeah. Uh, Trekkie. No, she'll say she hates Trek. <laughs> Warranty. Sure. Same. And now if you want to add another option, all you got to do is go back to the option table, right? Is Star Wars fan. They don't really have a name. And I just actually just had to Google that because I've never heard of one. I mean, you got Trekkies for Star Trek or Trekkers. I like Trekkie. Um, yeah, I'm a nerd. I like Trekkie. Um, you know, brown coats for for uh, Firefly, of course. But there's no there's no term for for Star Wars fans. But uh, oh yeah, I talked earlier about uh, triple state checkboxes. You could make triple state checkboxes in there that will basically let you have yes, no, or null. But I af after thinking about this, I think that just not having the option there is essentially a null value. You don't know, right? Now, there are a couple issues that you might run into. First of all, someone could add the same option twice. How do you deal with that? that well, there's a couple different ways. Um, I would make a composite key. A composite key will let you set it so that you can't have duplicate values across multiple fields. Right, and in this one I show it to you so you can't have the same product on an order. So you couldn't put phaser on the order twice, for example. Same thing here. You could set up a composite key to prevent the same option for this customer. I will walk you through doing that in the extended cut. And in addition to that, we're going to do something very cool. 
we're going to make it so we can click a button right here and add all of the options to that customer's account. Just one click, they all show up. Then all you have to do is come in here and go click, click, click to the ones you want to set to yes and the other ones default to no. We'll do that with a little tiny bit of VBA code. So those will both be covered in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases and you get access to the code vault, which has got lots of cool stuff in it. But uh, yeah, let's uh, check it out. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.